Hi everybody, this is Alex Dillon from Drayton Solutions Throughput Academy. Welcome to the On Time in Half the Time series. This series is about simplified drum buffer rope in manufacturing. And in particular, I want to teach you about why this dramatically reduces your manufacturing lead time while improving your due date performance. That's the subject of part one. Part two is more about advanced implementation issues and some of the interesting situations that I've observed in client implementations of SDBL. Part three, we're going to talk about how you get buy-in from colleagues and some of the various simulations and tips and tricks that I use with my clients to help them to understand SDBR and how it works. And then in part four, we're going to talk about how you take your superior operational capability and turn it into a competitive advantage, one that your competitors can't match and that you can earn superior returns from. We're going to cover a lot of ground in part one, and in particular, I'm going to tell you about the four simplifying assumptions that are made in order to turn drum buffer rope into simplified drum buffer rope. It makes the situation and the implementation a lot easier, believe me. On the slide there, you can see just one of those, and that's around the shipping buffers. I'll explain a lot more as we go forward. I'm also going to teach you about where SDBR shouldn't be used. There are plants where this approach isn't appropriate. We're also going to build upon our understanding that we gained in the efficient and unproductive video series about the role of inventory and how it is so critical in determining plant performance. I'll explain in a lot of detail, but basically we're going to drain the plant of a lot of the inventory that's already there. I'm going to show you exactly how we do that, and the mechanism is known as choking the release of raw material. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, how to develop a raw material release schedule, and how that plays out in the early stages of the implementation. I'll cover the buffer management priority system and how this guides operations on the shop floor. And I'll also show you what happens in the early stages of an implementation when we choke the release and we implement the buffer management priority system and how this affects plant performance. We'll talk about what happens when the initial choke period has completed and how we go about identifying a capacity constrained resource or a CCR. I'm going to take you through the five focusing steps of the theory of constraints and how we use that as a framework to guide our improvement and in particular I'm going to show you 12 different ways that you can improve throughput at the capacity constrained resource. And at the end of all that you should have achieved these learning objectives. You should understand the four simplifying assumptions that SDBR makes. You should understand where SDBR shouldn't be used and you should understand the four key elements of SDBR, namely choking the release of raw material, buffer management, dealing with CCRs, and ongoing improvement, which is a critical element of SDBR. There are six videos in part one, and they follow the learning objectives I set out in the previous slide. You're obviously in the introduction right now, um, but part two covers the simplifying assumptions and where SDBR shouldn't be used. Part three looks at the four key elements of uh, SDBR, but, and in particular looks at the first two, so choking the release of raw materials and the buffer management priority system. Part four, I'm going to spend some time showing you how that plays out in the plant in the early stages of an implementation, what you should expect to see and the benefits of doing that. Part five deals with uh, CCRs, and as I mentioned earlier on, the 12 different ways in which we can go about increasing throughput of CCR. And then the final part includes um, what we do about ongoing improvement. And this is, as I said, a really important aspect of SDPR. This is where you get the lion's share of your results long term. And at the end of all that, you should understand why your production lead time should be reduced by at least 50% and your due date performance should be at or around about 99%. You'll also understand why the SDBR approach exposes significant amounts of capacity that you can use to grow sales without growing costs. Obviously, that means more profit. But it'll also, you'll understand a focused, robust and ongoing improvement process that continues to improve your manufacturing system over time. As ever, we need to pay credit to the inventors of what we're talking about here today. And uh, one of them is Ellie Godrat. Uh, you'll have heard me talk about him in previous videos. So um, I'll suffice to say he is the father and the inventor of the theory of constraints. So we're going to talk about that a lot. And then there's another gentleman by the name of Ellie Schragenheim, who is a longtime collaborator with Ellie Godrat. And he actually took the drum buffer rope approach that Dr. Godrat invented and turned it into simplified drum buffer rope, which is obviously the topic of these videos. Ellie Schragenheim is a great guy. Uh, he is one of the true 
great thinkers in the theory of constraints. And if you want to learn more about him, then just have a look at his website. He's got a really nice blog there with uh, his thoughts on lots of different aspects of TOC. Okay, before we begin, just a word on what these videos are really about. These videos are intended to be educational. They do not constitute or substitute for expert consulting advice on how you go about implementing SDBR. Obviously, I can't take responsibility or liability for anything that you do as a result of these videos. And if you want to implement SDBR, great, but it really pays to have someone who knows what they're doing make some careful checks before you do that. OK, so please think about that before you take any action. If you want help, by all means, email me on the address there. I'm more than happy to help uh, or at least point you in the direction of someone who can help you. So don't be afraid to drop me an email if you want to take this further and take some action. There is some recommended pre-reading or pre-viewing for these videos. Uh, strongly recommend you read the goal by Goldratt, which I've talked about before, and his article, Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. There's a link there in the slides should you want to go and download a PDF copy. Well worth a read. One of the best things that Ellie ever wrote. If you haven't watched the Efficient and Unproductive uh, Throughput Academy videos, please go back and do that as well. That will help you to understand some of the things that we're going to talk about in these videos. OK, that's it for part 1.1. The introduction is complete. Now go to part 1.2 and we can get into the real substance of these videos.